welcome to part three of my surgery series this is gonna be my q a this is going to be the most vital information the video that really ties the bow on everything and puts everything together so i'm gonna be answering a lot of questions you guys have asked me how do you prepare for surgery when you're going for surgery now whether you're going for surgery abroad or going to surgery getting surgery in america this is gonna apply a lot of the things that i've been going over still apply even for surgery in america preparing for surgery you want to make sure your immune system is the best you can get it okay and you want to make sure all your levels are where they're supposed to be because if your hemoglobin is too low i think if it's like under an 11 or something like that you literally can't get surgery you want to make sure that's up to par i believe if it is too low when you go to dr um you can get a blood transfusion but who wants to do that right their blood is clean they do test people who donate blood there so their blood is clean but like who wants to do that so you just need to make sure that your immune system is built before you go it takes a lot to heal so you want to take your vitamin c and you want to take your iron which you're also going to take afterwards too while you're healing to build your immune system and also anytime i go i always get a clearance either for my doctor or my hematologist make sure that my everything is up to par my levels are up to par i don't have a blood clot you know what i'm saying like just making sure everything is on point i would do that before i even go to dr now yes they do test you again in dr the day before your surgery but i would just do all of that before i go so i don't waste my time um, do you need to exchange money when you go to dr no you do not need to exchange money everywhere takes usd i don't know many places that don't i've never ran into the issue where they didn't take um usd so i feel like it's just such a tourist country that they all take usd you don't need to exchange money but you do need to have cash because not everywhere takes your card do you need a covid test no, you do not need a COVID test anymore. I know um, before they were requiring COVID test for you to get surgery. It was like $100 or something like that, but they're not requiring that anymore. So what is the max BMI? Every doctor is different, you know. But I will say this, a lot of doctors lately are not going by BMI because it's so off. I'm 5'11". I weigh, right now I weigh about 239. I have like no fat on me and I have a lot of muscle because I go to the gym. So my legs are, are have a lot of muscle. I feel like that's where I carry most of my weight. So you can't look at my BMI and say, oh no, you're not healthy. The BMI thing, if you have so much fat, your body is mostly fat and you're like a really high BMI, it's going to be a little dangerous because you might have some health issues. The BMI thing, a lot of doctors aren't really using it as much anymore. They kind of do go off that as a guideline, but depending on your, your pictures that you send them, it might not necessarily matter. Some doctors will tell you like, oh, maybe lose 20 pounds before you come. But I know girls, honestly, who have not lost the weight and still got it. It just depends. In America, they can only take out five liters of fat so if your bmi is, if your bmi is high in america and they say yeah we work on high bmis but they can only take out five liters which is like literally nothing legally they can only take out five liters now some doctors in miami you're gonna find more than that but i don't know how much they take out in dr but they take out more and i like dr because they snatch you more even in america they can only take out five liters say you only have three liters of fat left like say you want to get lipo on your stomach and you literally have barely any fat you only have like three liters they won't even take that out even though their max is five liters it's like whatever you have they just take under it's just weird so a lot of times you'll see like these surgeons pages and like the results are so minimal you can't even tell that they had liposuction i don't understand it in dr they snatch you my doctor took out almost two liters i didn't even think i had that because i've had liposuction before once you keep getting liposuction your fat cells are gonna disappear so certain areas now like my back i'm probably never gonna grow fat again but then when you do grow fat it'll be in areas that you didn't get liposuction which is a problem so you really have to maintain your weight after surgery and also getting visceral fat which is you're growing fat internally which is wrapping around your organs which is pretty dangerous you can't eat like crazy just because you got liposuction there was one time throughout my whole entire journey that i was eating crazy i had been the heaviest i have ever been in my life this is when i started my gym journey it was during quarantine i was the heaviest i've ever been i was wasn't going to the gym I was huge okay and I could barely breathe like going up steps stuff like that so I wasn't gaining fat on my stomach I was gaining it internally so I was just getting super wide so it's really important to work out if you don't work out at least eat clean don't eat fast food all the time after your surgery okay very important how many cc's are my boobs I don't remember but um if you go through my I have a playlist on here on my youtube and it's my surgery playlist you can see 
my when I got my boobs done in DR. I forgot what the title is. It's something with breasts in DR. How many rounds? Um, I've had about four rounds of lipo. Um, I don't know if you would count it as four rounds, honestly, because my first surgery, I think my sur first surgery was May of 2018. I got a BBL, arm lipo, back lipo, cause and I got a tummy tuck. For a tummy tuck, they don't lipo. They usually don't liposuction your stomach. They do do muscle repair, but they usually don't liposuction your stomach when they do a tummy tuck. So I just had lipo pretty much on my back and like my flanks which is like my sides right here and then my second round i got a bbl and they took some fat out and they put a lot in my butt and honestly my second round i didn't even notice it in my butt it's like i know he filled it up but it just looked the same to me probably because i was swollen on my back and my stomach and stuff but yeah that was definitely around a lipo the third time i did lipo i had like no fat at the time so he literally had to take fat out of my thighs because i wanted another bbl it wasn't enough fat i don't even think any of that fat survived so i don't even count that because there was no difference but i mostly went that round i mostly went just for my boobs um and then this is the fourth time and I, he took out like two liters so yeah i count this I don't think I can grow any more fat, so yeah. Either way, I'm not getting any more lipo. Did I get an arm tuck? Everybody's been asking this question for like years. <laughs> and I don't lie, so I just want, I don't lie, so I just won't answer. But like, yes, I did get an arm tuck. That is why I have the tattoos. Girls will come to my page shading me all the time. Like, yes, I had an arm tuck. I had an arm tuck my second round. When I got the BBL, where I said he put like a shitload of fat in there. I get a lot of questions about the recovery from that. Um, it wasn't easy. <laughs> one of my hardest recoveries why I, it took me a few months for my arms to recover and the reason why is because i didn't listen to the doctor i was lifting my arms you're not supposed to lift your arms a lot i think like past your head or something when you get an arm lift same with your breasts so i was lifting my arms i was doing everything normally and inside my arm it literally split so it's healing in my armpit and it split it was like all right here it looked crazy it looked like a bullet wound i wasn't infected i thought i was I was not infected. My massage lady was giving me like these pills to put in it. So it was really nasty because my father would be like all sweaty and it smelled like pills. It was disgusting. It was like the worst thing to heal. And then once this started healing, this side ripped open. Like I just didn't learn my lesson. So both sides looked like bullet wounds. They looked crazy. They looked disgusting. They took months to heal. Now they would have been healed in like a month and a half. I, I did that to myself. If you get an arm lift, just don't lift them too high. Be careful. You have to do wound care, which I'm really good at. That's probably why they didn't get infected. But yeah, it took me a really long time. It took me probably like four months to heal and it should have took like a month and a half. Also, your scars will not go away with the arm lift. So I did get tattoos to cover it up. This is the perfect way to cover it up. I can wear whatever I want. I don't have to worry about my scar. So yeah, your scar is not going to heal to the point where you can't notice it with the arm lift. It's just not gonna happen. It might be really thin, but you're still gonna be able to notice it, especially from far away. Now a tummy tuck tattoo and arm lift tattoo are two different things. I hate the tummy tuck tattoo. It's very obvious you got a tummy tuck arm lift. It's like... You know, you could get so many tattoos inside and they would never know it's because you had an arm lift. So also, if you get an arm lift and you want your breasts done as well, I'd recommend getting them at the same time because you can't lift your your arms above your head for a long time with either surgery. So you might as well get them together. If you get your breasts done separately, you're going to have to go through that again where you can't lift your arms over your head. And there's a lot of things you need to, li you need to lift your arms over your head for. So did I have a base before I got surgery? Yes, I did. <laughs> I had a butt. I had hips. I just had like from giving birth. Birth. I gave birth twice and after you give birth when you're pregnant I was itching constantly I didn't know anything about stretch marks nothing I was literally 17 years old when I got pregnant I was very young so I was I would literally lay down and just itch my stomach all day when you're pregnant you use um, just keep it moisturized always your stomach and then when you give birth you wear faha that is a way to minimize loose skin and stretch marks um, you may still get it but it won't be as bad as mine <laughs> And I gave birth twice. So, but um, yeah, I, I did have a butt. I did have hips. Actually, I'll, I'll I'll insert a couple pictures so you guys can see what I looked like before. All my pictures from before May of 2018 on my Instagram are before I had surgery. So yeah, I did have hips and a butt. Um, basically, what I did for when I got my first surgery, which was my tummy tuck BBL with lipo, I just told him I wanted like fat in the top just to round it out. How do I deal with the backlash I've gotten from surgery? Ciao. I don't. <laughs> I feel like people are so entitled to what you do with your body, which is really weird. But like, if you want surgery, do surgery. Like, it's not like I, I, I went after, I got surgery and then I was like, oh, I got this from the gym. I got this shape from the gym and started selling stuff. Like, I don't know why people get so upset, but you just have to ignore it. You're gonna get backlash regardless. I could have been one of them girls who lied, but it's like, you can tell I got surgery. You can tell I got my boobs done. So it's like, 
I can tell when a girl got surgery. If her body is too rounded out, you know she got surgery. Like, nobody is born with perfect round hips and a round butt in a small waist. It's just not possible. So I was like, what's the point in lying? I just, I don't like lying. I'm not a liar. I always tell the truth. Like, I'm just not one of those type of people who's gonna lie. I may omit, I may not say something, but I'm not gonna lie about it. Absolutely not. How long should you take off of work? So this is all dependent on what you get and what you do for work. So. I would recommend if you get an arm lift or like um, a tummy tuck, I would recommend if you work from home, you work from a laptop, you know, and your phone, I would take off about two weeks. That's probably how long it's gonna take you to learn how to use your stomach muscles again. And with the arms, it's just like harder to lift and things like that. So I would take off two weeks if you work from home. If you work um, in person, I would take off three weeks, possibly four, but three weeks is usually good. If you're getting liposuction, BBO, breasts, if you work from home, you could literally take off like four days because you can work in DR if you work from home. If you can work, um, if it doesn't matter like where your location is and you can work with Wi-Fi, you could definitely work from home. If you go to the DR, you have to you have to be there for I think at least like seven days after your surgery. You're gonna be bored at the recovery house. On day five, you're not resting all day. Like honestly, by like day three, you'll be okay to start working again. So, and if you work in office and you just got liposuction and all that, I would take off maybe like a week and a half. Okay, do you sit on your butt after BBL? You want to save the fat. After BBL, you want to lay on your stomach. Um, if you got it in your hips, don't lay on your sides. You just want to lay on your stomach. If you didn't get any in your hips and you just got it in your butt, you can lay on your hips on your, on your side. With the BBL, naturally, you're gonna lose some fat. Um, it's not all going to survive. Some of the fat is going to die um, throughout your healing process. After about six months, that's what you're gonna be left with. Of course, pressure and sitting on your butt, fat is still gonna survive, but it's gonna be less of a chance. And it also depends on what you're getting. So if you get a tummy tuck, you're gonna have to sit on your butt. You can't lay on your stomach. You can get one of those like pillow seats every time you sit down, if you're working in your office, whatever the case is. And it's like a circular pillow and then the middle's your butt is kind of like still lifted and you're kind of like mostly sitting on the pillow so it's like your butt is not like there's no pressure really on your butt so is it a boppy pillow i don't remember what it's called i always sat on my butt after but who did my massages her name was sarah um she was really good too she was highly recommended so yeah i got sarah when you go to your recovery house or like whoever your surgeon is they can give you recommendations as well they'll usually come to your recovery house and do your massages so yeah they can contact whoever you want to contact and tell them like hey so and so wants massages they want a package my package was 350 for 10 massages or it was 40 dollars for if you got them separately do you recommend a stage three faha i think you should get a stage three but you can get your regular faha taken in i'm not even two weeks wait what's today the 17th okay today i am 12 days post-op right yeah i got my surgery on the 5th so i'm 12 days post-op my faha i got it taken in in dr um because i went to casa colombia and they take it in i'm already on the third hook i'm gonna get mine taken in until i can't get it taken in anymore you'll know when you can't get it taken in anymore because the sides are gonna hurt really bad once that happens then you get a stage three don't get a stage three as soon as as soon as you hit like your third hook i would not get a stage three then because like your swelling is always going to be going down i'm on the third hook right now and i'm wearing foams and a backboard is i'm not even two weeks post-op there's no point in getting a stage three you're gonna keep the swelling is gonna go down rapidly in the beginning get it taken in you can even get it taken in by the cleaners i, I used to do that i used to get it taken in at the cleaners and a good cleaners and they can literally take in the sides you just tell them like oh i want two inches on each side taken in and then once you can't get it taken anymore, it's been a while. I would say maybe after a month and a half, get a stage three and make sure it's a medi belt. How did I get rid of my tummy tuck scar? I get this all the time. I didn't get rid of it, but it's a lot, 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 lot lighter. I did microneedling. I did it in Miami. I don't remember what the place was called, somewhere I think in Weston, but microneedling, it basically re-traumatizes the scar. So it heals again. And it's like a little pen with like a million little needles and it, it hurts. And I used numbing cream that I got from China. I was like, 10% lidocaine and it still hurt so you can do that or you can do a tummy tuck revision you can use all the mederma in the world okay it's not gonna get rid of a deep scar like it's just not gonna happen like it's not gonna take away the first layer of your scar the scar is deep it may help lighten it but it's not gonna get rid of it so yeah my tummy tuck scar is, is a lot lighter because of the microneedling so I highly recommend that 
or just getting a whole entire tummy tuck revision. What's your review on Dr. Judicelli? What procedures did you go in for? Um, obviously, Dr. Judicelli is the GOAT. I have nothing bad to say about him. Um, I'll get more, a little more into Judicelli um, towards the end of this video. After I'm done with the q and I'm gonna talk about a couple things that I think are really important um, that everybody should know that a lot of people don't know during surgery. Somebody said, obviously somebody talked you into doing it. Nobody ever talked me into surgery. I honestly, I know this sounds crazy and I'm actually admitting this, but I told you I don't lie. I've been obsessed with surgery since I was about 12 years old. All of my family knows this, like, yeah. I've been obsessed with surgery. Back then it was obviously just boobs. When I was young, I used to watch The Swan where they like completely made over somebody, new teeth, army makeover, new nose, like whatever they felt they needed to get done. That's That show sounds kind of crazy today, but back then it was a thing. I used to watch Dr. 90210. I used to watch I Want a Famous Face on MTV. So I've always wanted surgery. I don't do surgery for a man. There are girls who do surgery for their man or they, you know, I've never been the type. Honestly, I had a base. No man I've ever been with told me to get surgery. They were all against it because I, I already looked good. Every single, every ex I had, I used to always talk about surgery and they hated it. They did not want me to get surgery. I get surgery because I want to be happy when I look in the mirror. And I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I see a little bit of fat somewhere and I can get it, I can remove it, I'm gonna remove it. Like the smallest little imperfections I want to remove. Do I have body dysmorphia? Yes, I've never said I didn't. I, it's, it's a thing, body dysmorphia is real, especially that's something that you have to think about when you get surgery. Um, a lot of girls do develop body dysmorphia after their first round. I developed body dysmorphia when I was young, clearly, because <laughs> I was obsessed with surgery from young. But you have to know when to chill. Like this last round, if I had got a BBL as well, I would have looked crazy. You have to know your assignment. I've always said this in my surgery videos. If you like surgery a lot, or like you want to fix everything, know when to chill. Don't ever want to overdo it. Everybody wants a small waist and a fat ass, but you don't want the smallest waist you can get and the fattest ass you can get because it's going to look disproportionate. And people don't think like that when they're doing these things until after it's too late. You know, I don't want super round, huge hips because eventually they won't match. I'm thick as shit. I've always had really thick legs. So for me to put so much fat that it doesn't match, and my thighs are too big and they don't match my legs is crazy same with my butt like I have thick ass thighs so if I put so much fat in my butt that it doesn't match like I'm tripping so you have to know when to stop there's tons of girls you see they're botched they got too many rounds eventually it just starts to look crazy so you have to know your assignment nobody's ever gonna tell me like oh you you need a bigger butt you should get surgery if a man told me that I would leave him I don't play that shit <laughs> me when I mean relationships, I don't play that shit. You're not gonna tell me I need surgery. Who are you? Why like, get the fuck out of here. If your man is telling you that you need surgery, leave him. What the fuck? If he's okay if you're telling him you want surgery and he supports it, that's different. Telling me you want me to get surgery, like you could leave. Go find somebody else. You're gonna take me as I am, period. And you're gonna take whatever I decide to do with my body. Period. You're gonna support me through whatever. Period. Do you think this will be your last surgery? Yes. Well no, because I told you I'm getting my breast done. In about a couple years, I'm gonna get my boobs taken out in a lift. And then when I'm older, I might get a facelift if I need it. How was lipo after a tummy tuck? I'm ready for round two. Ciao. If you've already had a tummy tuck and you wanna go for another round and get lipo, my only advice to you would be do not lipo around your belly button and tell the doctor that because it will mess up your belly button. Whatever belly button you got from the tummy tuck, if you really like your belly button, you know, you will ruin it if you get lipo. Like I said, I had the perfect belly button and I ruined it when I got lipo, cause I didn't know. Now I told uh, my doctor when I got lipo this time, I said, don't go around my belly button cause I don't want it to be even more ruined. The inside of your belly button is all scar, scar tissue. Cause they're literally making you a whole entire new belly button. If they lipo around that, there's no fat cushion. So now it's gonna be like the scar tissue is in and now there's no fat cushion. So it's gonna kind of like start to show just like on the outside of it. And you don't want that. Now also for me, my belly button actually is not all from um, liposuction. It's also because I got my belly button pierced and it rejected. So now it looks like, you know, it's from a tummy tuck, but it's really not. Is this your first BBL or is it a top up? No, I didn't have a BBL. Um, I've had, what, two BBLs? I wouldn't even count the third one because it all disappeared. So what made you choose your doctor? <sighs> I did a lot of research. You always have to research your doctor. Girls, I, I feel like the problem is girls don't know how to research their doctor. You look on YouTube, look up your doctor. I would look up um, Dr. Judicelli deaths, Dr. Judicelli infections, okay? And you go on Google, Dr. Judicelli deaths, Dr. Judicelli infections. 
and then you go on real self and look at the reviews and then you can go in surgery groups you know there's surgery groups on facebook and you'll look at the the things that they're saying now every doctor is gonna have some patients who weren't happy there's no doctor who doesn't have that but he was very safe and let me say this this is from the the girl who's doing my massages she's been she's been in the surgery industry for like i don't even know i think she's still like 20 years she used to work for um dr Giselli's dad she was in the or room with him and the way his dad works he is strict mind you he's the president of plastic surgery he was the president of plastic surgery at CSEP twice. He's very, very, very safe. She said, like, if a girl was exposed, he'd be like, oh, put something over her. Like, she's still human. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's operating on her, but it's like, if he's not operating on that body part, put a sheet over it. Yeah. Or if somebody's walking by, he'd be like, close the door, close the door. Or like, put something over her, you know? Or like, cleanliness, very, very, very clean. CSEP is the cleanest hospital in DR. The reason why a lot of girls get infections is because the hospital is dirty. Most of the hospitals in DR are dirty because the standards there are low. They don't have to clean. They don't have to keep things sterile. And that's why a lot of girls get infections, okay? I heard um, Duran, she used to work at a clinic that was really dirty and then she moved to another clinic and she had like, she doesn't have infections anymore. It really is about the clinic you go to. Also the clinic, CSEP um, has an ICU, which I don't think... Almost none. None of the clinics have an ICU. They look nice, you know, but they don't have an ICU unit. And that's pretty important. <laughs> Especially if you're getting surgery at a freaking hospital. CSEP is very strict. Their guidelines are very strict for the surgeons working there. So you don't hear about dust at CSEP. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. C-E-C-I-P, whatever. So obviously, Judas Sally learned from his dad. You know, he's very safe. He has empathy for his patients. A lot of surgeons lack empathy for their patients. Yilly... I heard from um, this lady who, who used to do my massages in DR. She There was like this big event where it was like doctors and um, people, everybody at the recovery houses was there who works at recovery houses, like it was a big event. And she said she overheard Yilly talking to another doctor. I don't remember which doctor it was. And um, she was talking crap about some of the patients she's killed. I heard she's disgusting. I heard Yilly is nasty, like no empathy, very cold, very nasty. Yeah, I've heard some stuff, man, about some of the doctors out there. Um, some of them, you know, let the fame get to their heads because a lot of them are famous in DR. You know, they're very arrogant, but that's the same in America. I've been to consultations and then doctors are just super arrogant and big-headed and it's like, ew. Judas Sally is very, very humble. So that's another thing. When you're talking to him, he's not like, he's not rude. He's really nice and he's very humble and he's very honest. And he'll tell you like, hey, you know, he's he'll, he'll turn you down. I know a couple people he turned down like yeah so yeah the hospital he works at is extremely safe and it's very clean the fact that his dad is a doctor a plastic surgeon for like i don't know how many years you know obviously he learned from him yeah and he's just he's very humble it was when I, my first round he came to my recovery house and literally checked on me it was he was like that's unheard of how long does it take you to heal um i have laser light bulb um to, uh, today's day 12 and um i feel pretty normal uh, the only part that hurts is right here, but it doesn't hurt as much anymore. Like, I can lift my arms now, and it's, like, not as bad. So, before I couldn't do this. It's still really tight, but also I had an arm lift, so it's it's gonna be more tight in this area. But I'm feeling so much better. I'm, like, barely in any pain. My bruising is gone. <sighs> did you do it awake or asleep? Um, I did it, uh, sleep. I, I did general anesthesia. I don't want to do anesthesia awake. I've, I've done surgery awake when I got my arm liposuction because lower arms, um... There's like probably like three doctors I could find who do lower arms. One was in the Philippines, one I think it was in like Sweden, and the other one was in Tampa. Celebrity arms. I have lipedema, I have a fat disorder. So I, I was growing fat in weird places. You have to get a special type of liposuction for it. So Dr. Sue in Tampa, he did my full arm liposuction. And I was awake the whole time and it's just so traumatic. I have very bad anxiety. No medication works for my anxiety, like I think they give you Valium or something, it doesn't work. I have anxiety, you know, I'm, I'm always feeling like I'm gonna feel it. So it's like, he'll like, you know, he did like incisions everywhere. So it's like, he'll shoot you with a local anesthesia and then he'll take a scalpel and he'll like open it. And then he'll put the long um, liposuction thing in and start going in. That's scary as hell. And inside the, um, the liposuction, tool has also numbing in it but it's like that shit is scary like i'm just thinking the whole time every time he uses a scalpel and cuts through how how easy that thing slices through your skin it just i just like what if i feel feel it what if i feel it 
gives me anxiety. Somebody like me, I can't do it. I don't ever want to do surgery again when I'm awake, seriously. And it was painful, it was, honestly. Especially when he started getting to the areas where he did it numb, like the border of like right here. Yeah, that shit hurt. For the most part, I think Dr. Giuseppe does uh, most of his surgeries asleep. Doing surgery awake is safer though. That's why so many doctors in America are doing surgeries awake. Like all their surgeries, like even tummy tucks, they're doing awake. Um, just because it lowers the risk and I get it, but uh, I just have such bad anxiety. I feel like I I'm going to pass out. Hi, wait, before pics, have you ever had an arm lift? How was recovery? I asked, I asked, I answered all this, but my height and weight, I'm 5'11", and my weight is 239. So if you look at my BMI, it's high, but obviously I, I have barely any fat. I was looking for a doctor in Colombia, and he's actually the one who invented vaser light bulb. Got his name, but um, I sent him my pictures, and he asked for my weight and everything. He said, oh, according to your, your weight, um, your BMI is too high, so I can't operate on you. Now, if a doctor tells you no, listen, I'm not going to argue with you. You probably saved my life. I, I I don't know. If you tell me no, I'm cool with it. On to the next. But you can't really go off a of BMI with me because the pictures I showed him, like, I didn't really have any fat. So how do you travel back on the plane without messing up your fresh results? Traveling is easy. I'm, I live in New York, so my flight was only three hours. Um, get an aisle seat. You have to... I would get up and walk at least once. Like, go to the bathroom. Even if you don't go to the bathroom, just stand up in there or something and then walk back. So it's obviously kind of weird walking up and down the aisles of the plane. Some people do it, but I, I have social anxiety. I don't want to do that. <laughs> like I said, at the airport, you cannot wear your foams under your faha. You can wear your faha. So bring a foam, one foam in your bag. And then after, you can go to the bathroom and put it in. How long was your surgery? I don't know. I, I didn't ask, but I know how long surgeries usually are. My surgery, honestly, since I, I had such, um, I just got liposuction in my sides and in my back. My surgery was probably like an hour and a half. It just depends. Like most surgeries don't go over three hours. If you get a lot done at once, maybe four hours, but you you shouldn't be under general anesthesia for that long. That's why you can't get too much at once. Also because, you know, losing too much blood, you might need a blood transfusion if you get too much done at once. So honestly, I would recommend like three things at once, depending. Also being under anesthesia for too long can have some really bad effects. So, How's your experience with Dr. G? Do you think he's a good round two doctor? Yes, he's a great round two doctor. But it depends on what you want to get. Like, don't go to Dr. G for a facelift. I don't even know if he does facelifts, but like you have to look at, if you're looking for a surgeon, look at what they do on their page, what they specialize in. Dr. Judy Sully specializes in, in BBLs and tummy tucks. Tummy tucks is his specialty, okay? So his belly buttons, his, his lines are very precise. He has really nice belly buttons. So mostly on his page, you're going to see tummy tucks and BBLs. You do see breasts too. But um, the things that you see the most of, that's what you want to go to that doctor for. Like, every doctor specializes in something. They, they're not great. They're not gonna be the best doctor to go to at everything. So, but round two, lipo, BBL, tummy tucks, all that shit, yes. He did my boobs too and they were really good, so. What made you change your mind about recovery homes? What do you mean, I'm going to, re I went to recovery home. I don't know what this question means. Um, I'm, I'm a big advocate for recovery homes. I would never go to DR and have my friend take care of me. Everything is at a recovery home. You have a driver who, a safe driver who's picking you up from the airport, taking you to your appointments. Like, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just, come back from surgery they help you with everything you need to help with they cook for you they do everything a recovery house you don't have to worry about anything and it's not expensive like recovery homes depending on what you decide if you want like the best room it's probably gonna be like mm, two thousand for ten days regular room like a thousand for 10 days, you might have to share a room with somebody. I know Giuseppe has packages, so recovery home included for 10 days with your surgery. He works with some of the recovery homes and it's actually included, so. Recovery home is the best option to do. Seriously, I would never recommend anything else. Is it still Apple 360 to do your arms too or is it cheaper to do the back and stomach alone? So he did not do my arms this time. I just had my back and my sides. So honestly though, if you ask him to do your arms too in DR, it's maybe $500 more or it just might be the same price. Usually with Judicelli, lipo starts off at $5,000. Um, if you want lipo 360, he's going to tell you free BBL. But if you don't get a BBL, either way, it's going to be like 5000 So if you start adding in arm arm lifts and, or like a tummy tuck, it might be like 6500 So yeah, those are like the normal prices. Who's my overnight nurse? I didn't have one. I didn't have one. Now, um, the recovery homes can recommend you some. Overnight nurse is, you really need to, I guess, get a good, a good over, like, 
an overnight nurse literally they stay at you at the hospital they're there because sometimes with the communication barriers some of the nurses don't speak english if you have a tummy tuck you're really gonna need an overnight nurse okay situations like your arms and arm lifts you're gonna need an overnight nurse because you can't really move too much um your first like couple days with your arms yeah certain things you're really gonna need an overnight nurse i got away with it i don't know exactly if it's like mandatory anymore with certain s procedures but with a tummy tuck i would definitely recommend it and literally they're just there to speak for you you know and, and help you if, if you need help like going to the bathroom with like a bedpan if you have to go number two um because you already have a catheter in so <clears throat> that's that's basically what they're there for like they're not an overnight nurse when you're in the hospital like you're not doing a whole bunch of stuff you're literally mostly in the bed the whole time since you have a catheter you don't have to go to get up to go to the bathroom so you might wake up and ask the overnight nurse to charge your phone and hand it to you stuff like that like very simple shit and usually overnight nurses are like 100 for a night okay so that's basically all the questions um that i'm gonna answer i think i don't need to answer all these questions because some of them are already touched base on but i want to talk about cutting your nails um, you have to have short nails. These are like the longest I would go, honestly. These are even too long. Like you just need short nails, which sucks because I love my long nails. But you're going to need short nails for like three months because you're going to be wearing your faja for three months. Once you're done with your faja, you can get your long nails again if you wear long nails. The other thing I want to talk about is post-surgery blues, okay? This is something that nobody knows most people do not know about okay post surgery blues is after surgery you are not going to see your results right away you might feel like you look the same or you look very similar you're not going to see your results for three months i've dealt with this from some of my friends who've had surgery and just constantly trying to reassure them like listen you're gonna see results in three months like especially with liposuction you're not healed until three months so after three months you're gonna look in the mirror and be like damn like my back is snatched oh my gosh or like my stomach is snatched like right now when i look in the mirror i look I, I i can tell the difference but it's not like a huge difference when i look in the mirror but me being have having been through surgery already before i know how surgery works and you will not see your results for about three months it's literally like the th day of the third month the day you hit the third month you're like damn your butt is gonna be popping your back is gonna be snatched like that's just how it works you will not see if it comes to liposuction liposuction anything that causes swelling you're not gonna see results with your breast you'll see results right away i can tell you this and you'll still get surgery and you will still be disappointed until the three month mark you just have to keep reassuring yourself even me i've had surgery how many times i still have to reassure myself all the time i do it every single day i look in the mirror i'm like listen you're gonna see your results in three months this is not it every single day and i've already been through this and i know and i've helped other people through the same thing and i still have issues it's called post-surgery blues. It's basically like postpartum depression for uh, surgery. Aftercare is the hardest part with surgery. It's not the surgery. It's not the pain because that will leave your body in like three months. I mean, in like three weeks. After, after you have to stick to all this stuff. Like I'm giving my massage, massages every day. I'm gonna have to go to a massage lady once a week for the first month. So like four more massages I'm gonna get. Wear my faha. Making sure I have my foams in my backboard everything you know getting my faha taken in having to um get a stage three like you have to keep up with all this stuff it's gonna take a lot of energy out of you it's gonna it takes a lot you can't be lazy with your aftercare so doing all that all the pain you go through and not seeing your results for three whole months yeah it's gonna mess with anybody's head mentally it would all this stuff you went through and you still like every single day you're going through all this stuff every single day you're constantly going through you know aftercare and pain and whatever you go through after surgery and it's like you won't be able to see your results for three months it's like going to the gym and not be able to see your results for three months which wouldn't happen but working hard for three months and not be able to see your results will mess with you mentally but if if you can just stay strong see it through i promise you after three months you're gonna see your results you will not see them straight out the OR room. It's not gonna happen. That's basically it for my Q&A. Um, yeah, like I said, if you watch this whole entire series, my part one, two, and this part three, you're gonna need to know, you're, you pretty much know everything about surgery. Whether you're getting it abroad, whether you're getting it in the US, you know everything you need to know. And then some, and the little things that people don't tell you about. I really took my time and made sure I covered everything. Cause I've made surgery videos before, but I just wanted to make something where you can't learn about surgery in a couple days like it takes a long time it's so many things that you need to know 
about surgery. So I'm just trying to do it so like you can watch these videos and know everything you need to know. Everything you need to know about surgery in these videos so you don't have to learn on your own and take the time. It's like basically a self-help book where I'm summarizing everything into three videos. So after you watch this, you'll be well educated about surgery because there's a lot to it. A lot of stuff that you wouldn't even think of. It's a lot to surgery. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you're thinking about surgery or you're getting surgery, I wish you the best of luck with your surgery and I really hope that this video helps you guys.